This is Corey Lamley with Life in the Grid, and in this video, I want to run through how you can cut down on repetitive tasks that you perform online. The process of creating smoother, cleaner, streamlined systems all starts with the process of DRY, which stands for Don't Repeat Yourself. In fact, there's a whole Wikipedia write-up on it. Repetitive tasks is something we all want to avoid, and with iMacros, we can definitely cut down on it. I've been using iMacros plugin for many years now, and it's really become a true process in my workflow. Anytime I find myself uh, repeating a web form or filling in data more than once, I'll usually jump out and record an iMacro script so that I don't have to repeat this process. Now, if you've ever used iMacros before, there's nothing entirely too fancy that I'll be showing in this video. The overall intent of this video is to show how you can cut down on repetitive tasks. Now, you can get iMacros just by doing a quick Google for um, Firefox iMacros. Um, it also um, comes available with Internet Explorer and Chrome, but I have found the most success um, with the uh, Firefox plugin. So go ahead and download that, and once you get it downloaded, you can click on this tab over here in the left hand corner, and is what it will show is the iMacros um, plugin, and it'll just toggle back and forth. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details of everything that the plugin does. Um, but uh, you can play with that on your own. Is what I want to show is just some quick demonstrations of what iMacros can do. Now, right now, I'm on a website that I maintain um, during my day job. And one of the things that I do on this particular website is I fill in this form that we see here over and over and over again. So instead of repeating this process over and over again, I'm going to show you how to record a macro. So it's very simple. All you do is click on the record tab and then you click on the record button and I will go ahead and begin to fill in this form here and as you see as I start typing data in here it begins to record all this information and I'm going to go ahead and give myself a title go ahead and fill my name in here um, we'll just put in a fake address here um, We'll go ahead and fill in some more data here. Just put in a fake zip. We'll try United States. Uh, and we'll fill in a phone number here. Now I'm just going to go to there and I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording here. And whenever I stop the recording, um, it gathered all the information inside of this macro that we see right here. Now if I go back and play this macro, um, you'll see that it'll actually reload the page and fill in all these values. So let's go ahead and replay this macro really quickly. Bam! It filled all that in. And as you can see, it did it very, very quickly. So if you wanted to slow things down, you can actually change the speed at which it processes. So just to get a better view, let's go ahead and replay this in a little bit slower format. Click on our macro again here and click play. And as you can see, it's going to reload the page. It's going to come down here and it's just going to start filling in these values. Now you can see how this can really save you a lot of time, especially if you enter in a specific form over and over and over again. Now remember, this can actually go across page requests. So if you click uh, the next button, it will remember those values and continue recording. So if you had a wizard screen or something such as that, it would record quite a bit of data. So this is a quick example of using iMacros to populate a form. All right, so in this next demo, I'm going to show you how I use iMacros to test a plugin that I wrote called the Duplicator. And as what I want to do is I want to do a demonstration without iMacros, and then I'm going to do a demonstration with iMacros, and we'll see the difference that it takes in the time sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in a stopwatch here and I'm going to jump out to my WordPress administrator and begin to walk through this process manually. Now these are the steps that I would take manually to test my plugin and I'm not going to go into all the details of what I'm doing because I wouldn't do that normally when I'm testing. So I'm going to go ahead and start this stopwatch and then run through the process of what I would do manually. So I'm going to start this here. I'm going to give my package a name. I'm going to create my package. And all this is doing is this just zips up an entire WordPress site and allows us to move it to another location. So now is what I would do is I would download this installer. And I'm going to save this out to a location on my hard drive. 
save that and I'm also going to save the package itself which are all the files and that's all downloading now now is what I would do is I would browse out to this new location and I would begin the process of installing this file and in this case I would run through all the necessary steps that I need in order to um, install this test this connection looks good I'm gonna click install run through here is what this is doing is it's just is installing a WordPress site on a, at a completely different location so once I'm done with that is what I want to do is I want to go ahead and click on a resave my permalinks this is just a process that I have to perform every single time that I do this system and then is what I would do is I'd click on the install logs to run through and make sure that everything validated so let's go ahead and stop that real quick and we'll see it's at about a minute 40 seconds so we'll go ahead and remember that time and then I will start with another install okay so let's go ahead and run through the same demonstration using iMacro so let's go ahead and start our timer and we're gonna hit play now I recorded this macro earlier and one thing you will note is that this macro did need a little bit of editing it's not like um, this one was just you know right out of the box usually when you're doing a little bit more advanced um, uh, iMacros recordings you'll have to jump out and edit the files but we'll look at it in a little bit and we'll see that it's really not that complicated pretty simple stuff so this is continuing the install here and it's running through all the exact same processes that I did before I'm finalizing the saving of my permalinks now I'm done so now look at this it's uh, about 39 40 seconds versus a minute 40 seconds now that's an entire minute that I saved and I've tested this thing you know several hundred times in fact I looked earlier and the uh, ID was around 850 which means I've tested this thing close to 850 times and if you jump out and do a calculated conversion on seconds to hours that's roughly you know 14 plus hours that I've saved just by using this plugin now um, that's a huge time savings and one of the big things to also remember is that during that 40 seconds I can usually be thinking of something else I can be um, thinking about my next process my ne next step the things else that I need to do but when you're testing you gotta stay engaged you gotta stay focused so as you can see you know you save quite a bit of time there so let's go ahead and look at this this macro here real quick and I'm using a notepad plus plus to um, uh, view the the source code here and you'll see that it's not really complex source code um, <clears throat> most of these are just um, basic tag based structures um, you'll have some real basic variables that you set but nothing really complex one of the things that I had to tinker around with was the uh, wait time you have to put in these wait seconds because if you don't then sometimes the script will try to get ahead of itself and um, try to process one of these forms so um, towards the end of this video I'll run through some of the the important tags that you want to really kind of pay attention to but for most parts this um, was a very simple script to put together it took me maybe 10 or 15 minutes and then maybe another 10 minutes to validate and finalize test so overall you know I've saved easily 13 hours and that's just the time that I've saved thus far um, as I continue to do development on this thing it'll just continue to save me that much more time so that's a quick demonstration of um, comparative analysis on a particular recording okay so the last demonstration that I want to show here real quick is how you could use iMacros to um, submit to social bookmarking sites um, here's a blog uh, post saying you know there's 125 different social bookmarking sites well obviously submitting to all these would get quite hectic and I know there's tools and services out there like only wire that um, you can pay a monthly fee for and they'll they'll help with this process but iMacros does the job it does it pretty well and if you want to spend a little bit of time learning it and understanding it which really isn't that much time at all um, you can easily build your own um, scripting bookmark uh, generator now I put together this social one here with three different bookmarking sites in about five minutes 
and um, adding more to this would be not difficult at all. So let's go ahead and run through this demo real quick. Now I have this one scripted for three different sites and is what it's going to do is log through and create the link on each site and is what I do is I have it open up a new tab and that tab will allow me to go back and see um, the results of each bookmark and some of these you may run into a CAPTCHA like we do right here and you can easily overcome that CAPTCHA um, just by putting in a pause statement in your um, I macro script so um, bam it just saved all three of those very quickly let's go back and look um, WordPress duplicator um, scroll up here WordPress duplicator and the last one here and you saw how fast that entered and the great thing about iMacros is that um, it will actually read from a spreadsheet. And so I just put all this data, I put in the site that I wanted to hit, the username and password for each site, um, the URL, and a lot of this stuff is really easy, especially when you're trying to duplicate this stuff. You just, bam, drag it down, and you could see how you could easily do that for, you know, 20 different, 50 different sites. And so all this information is just pretty much pulled from iMacros and then it automatically submits it directly to this site. So that's just a quick run through of how you could use iMacros to auto populate your social bookmarking sites. All right, so earlier I said that I would go over some uh, commands that I thought were pretty important and uh, really a fast way to edit these scripts. Now is what I do is I usually open up a text editor. I'm using Notepad++ here and I'll browse directly to the iMacros directly and they have all the the macros that you're working on here so you can see this pound current that's the one that you're recording so if you come over here and you click on this macro right here and you click edit um, it will be the actual macro that you just recorded so this comes in really handy when you want to just cut and paste so say you just wanted to record you know entering in five or six fields you could easily record that and then you come over to the script that you're actually working on and then just cut and paste that data into here and um, that's just a real fast way to get um, the automated recordings into a specific script now you can also edit the um, the data sources which I showed earlier was just a spreadsheet um, it's right here in a folder called data sources and you can easily open that up I like to open it up in Excel because it's easier to read um, as far as the commands are concerned in iMacros um, if we want to look at the one with the Excel spreadsheet we can see that um, this is you know really straightforward stuff you just set your data source which was social auto here which is in the data source folder and then you can tell it how many columns you want it to read and then you just say data source line which is really a representation of each row and then you just map it to each column in the spreadsheet and you can see this stuff is just you know pretty much cut and paste and so we're gonna read from the next row and then the next row and then we just map each one of these columns and you can use um, special characters like the wildcard sign which on some sites they'll use like a session ID and it's gonna be different for each one so you can use a star and that will actually fill in the um, the dynamic key that they're using for a specific site so the wildcard key is pretty important you're gonna want to pay attention to this uh, ignore um, it's called set uh, error ignore and you want to set this equal to yes and what this does is it allows the script to keep processing so say for example I macros wasn't able to find this particular tag but you want it to keep processing and do the rest of your bookmarks that's really important um, like I said earlier you can set your data source here and um, if you want to keep opening um, each result into a new tab you can use the tab command so you say tab open and then you set your tab equal to the tab number that you want um, this clear command is very important because of what it will do is it will clear all the browser cache and log into the site and this is important so that you can get a consistent login and then refresh is good so that it will refresh the final page now all these commands are out on the iMacros website um, it's it's pretty straightforward it is a little bit geeky but um, I'm gonna go ahead and post this specific script on the blog post so if you want to grab it and run with it you can and if you just spend a little bit of time looking through the documentation and um, playing around with it it's really pretty simple stuff so 
I hope this was a good overview for using the iMacro script. I hope you can use this in your workflow to help automate your systems a little bit more faster and effective. And remember, if you don't even want to get into the coding part, you can just use it for simple recordings of uh, repetitive tasks that you do. So there's definitely a, a use case scenario for just about everything you can use on the web. And um, take it, use it, make it a success in your business. And I wish the best to all of you. Have a great day and good luck with your automation. Take care.